Ten days ago, Chris Vanderdrift was in one of motorsport's worst crashes ever survived. Now the New Zealand driver is already planning his return to the track. But as Sean Summerfield reports, a raft of injuries mean he'll quite literally have to walk before he can race. He talked exclusively to 3 News. For someone used to going 300 kilometres an hour, doing anything this slowly is agony. But for Chris Vanderdrift to be walking at all is yeah. nigh on amazing. Oh, that's a huge accident by Chris Vanderdrift! About the only thing not damaged in the Super League Formula race was Vanderdrift's need for speed. No, I'll be back in the car this year. That's my ultimate goal and, and hopefully make sure I win, win a race again before, before the end of the season. The impact was felt around Brands Hatch, especially in the commentary box where friend Earl Bamber was calling the race. That's actually probably personally the worst crash that I've ever seen in, in my life. Um, I know a lot of the guys around the pits um, echoed the same things. Vanderdrift's data box recorded 210 Gs at the moment he hit the bridge at 252 kilometres an hour. Only IndyCar driver Kenny Brack has survived a bigger crash, recording 214 Gs. By comparison, Robert Kubitz's Formula One crash registered 75 Gs. The impact shattered Vanderdrift's right ankle. The force strong enough to dislocate his right shoulder, crack the shoulder blade and break two ribs. The steering wheel was jolted so violently it broke his right wrist and dislocated his pinky finger. His left hand was then dragged along the track, mangling his index finger. The high G-forces which burst the blood vessels in Vanderdrift's eyes also caused him to black out. You see the car flying in the sky and that's basically my last... last um recall as well of the, of the incident too, so I think we both cut off at the same time. But Billy, his partner, wasn't spared any of the horror. I saw his car upside down and I was just like, that's not him, that can't be him, no way, you know, you kind of in denial. And then you sort of see the cars go past and then you sort of count and look for his car and his car's missing and you, OK, yep, that's him. Both are focused on a return to the track. Chris are a little more keen than Billy. You know, I'd be going tomorrow if I didn't have all this damage. The battered and bloody helmet that helped save his life. A constant reminder of the dangers of living on the edge. Sean Summerfield, 3 News.